have to point to something that was a little bit suspect. I've been the, the same as everyone else with access to the same internet, the same feeds of, of uh, information and news. So I witnessed a couple of days ago the story about the hospital getting blown to bits. And about 12 or maybe maybe even 24 hours coverage to say that the Israeli Air Force had done that. And a reaction around the world as if they had. And um, I didn't buy it for a moment. And it's not because I picked a side. It's because Israel don't score on goals. They don't. They make mistakes, but they don't score on goals. Now, the worst thing they could possibly do, because it, the international uh, sort of consensus is being used as a PR weapon against them. In every country in the world, there's a little free Palestine movement that's merged itself with the local anti-racists and climate change activists, and he's on the street. So... Bear in mind that that is a potent weapon and has stopped every single conflict between these two sides in the last 20 years. You don't go scoring on goals. So I weighed it up and I'm like, why would they do that? That makes absolutely no sense because of the PR war that's been fought against them. Like they've got no motivation for doing that. As much as they might hate those Palestinian bastards... They're not going to do that. It's too bad a look and they don't do that. You, you don't smash the ball past your own goalkeeper and score a victory for your opponents, do you? Not in a war. So straight away I'm a bit sus about it. As soon as I see the headlines, I'm sus about it. And then that guy who gets mouthing off about rockets... That guy who got mouthing off about rockets, I think he was a BBC guy, and it's like, the explosion's too big. I've, I've seen lots of footage of rockets hitting targets in Israel, and never seen an explosion as big as that. And then it struck me that there was something wrong. I'm like, this is a fool talking about rocket science, isn't it? You know, the old saying, well, it's not rocket science. It's easy to understand. It's like, well, this is rocket science. And it is easy to understand. It is rocket science. And it's easy to understand. But a fool's telling you. I've never seen an explosion that big. It's like... You can... No one in the studio does it at the BBC and they run the mouths and people and, and, and people are stupid. And no one puts anyone right because no one wants to make anyone feel bad. But it'd be like, sir, you've something missing from your equation. Your rocket science is off target. It's off the mark. Why is that, John? You've not taken into account <clears throat> rocket fuel. Like you, you large explosion from a relatively small rocket that comes from the rocket's fuel having exploded. You know, rocket fuel is famously explosive, famously volatile, and if you're firing a rocket and you, you're actually going to expel all this fuel and then let it hit its target based on its momentum, it's not a very, very dangerous explosive device. Why? Because it's expended, it's rocket fuel. It's rocket fuel be more dangerous than it's warhead. So if your missile doesn't go very far, you've not burned any fuel. The explosion it's going to produce when it hits the ground is really significant and really instant and will result in like a spectacular fireball. Rocket fuel, some. What you've got in your videos where it shows the rocket hit is absolutely perfectly what you'd expect to see.
BBC expert talking rocket science. A fool. Couldn't even stop to think for one moment as to what a rocket is. What it's capable of doing. Have you seen those old films? Of when the rocket launch goes wrong? Just saying, cause a lot of damage. Uh, like a, a, a tremendous amount of damage. Because rocket fuel is, you know, potent, explosive shit. So now, more information is made available. It appears that those geniuses who work for the Palestinian Authority, which is the new name for Hamas, uh, when Hamas need to be believed, they are called by the BBC, who, who leaked this story, who put this story out, who, who set the ball rolling on it, who made the false allegation, who repeated the propaganda to spread the bullshit story. They don't call Hamas Hamas anymore. They're the Palestinian Authority. Fortnight ago, you recognise that Hamas was the only authority. They are the government in Gaza. So that it'd be Hamas, wouldn't it? A Hamas spokesman said. But well, now you're having to like be careful what you say for whatever reason. And you don't want to make your your constituents unhappy. You're, the ideological audience capture of the Islamic community in places like Great Britain, an extremely powerful, influential, forcing local politics, which is what really matters. Now you don't want to be upsetting those kids because those kids turn up and they start beeping arms and they start being nasty and they. Decide to come along and show you who, who your city belongs to, really, if push came to shove. And that'd be far from in their way of doing it. It's so frightened of them that now you'll repeat lies that inflame them and not give the correct source of the info, not say what well, Hamas spokesman said. The biggest liars in the universe. Now, we have a... Now, uh, an intercepted telephone call that's been leaked, apparently verified, real, and it's two Palestinian authority workers talking about who they were going to blame it on. Looking to let it, let it slide that Israel gets the blame, but if Israel, if the blame doesn't stick to Israel, blaming it on a a fictional third party organization. Shift the blame, muddy the water, move on. The people will always believe that the Israelis did it because Israelis lie. You see the problem we've got now. But I tell you what, these problems can be lessened by sacking half of these people who are doing the reporting because, look, there is no press, no free press, no local TV stations in Gaza that aren't completely controlled by Hamas. So if those institutions didn't exist to cooperate with, like two weeks ago, they don't exist today. And the, the, the quality of people who've been sent in by the likes of the BBC as being reporters, they're not serious people and they're easy to manipulate. And what you've got coming out of there is just simp garbage that they've decided. They've already worked out what's happening here and they decided that they're, they're going to put all of them, put their own slant and simplified spin on it that makes them feel good about themselves because it's a complicated situation. So they've simplified it too in order to make it a story because otherwise it becomes a matter of, okay, to get a good understanding of this, you've got to be able to pass truth from lies or across 80 years of history and go and find both versions or even three and four versions of the events of the same 
incident, a war, and from there work out, looking at a map at the same time, what might have really happened. It's really difficult to, 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 to get to grips because so much of it's just lies. Now, the thing is with lies, it's like lies, sometimes a lie can, in just a few words, make a statement that you could write, it'd be so wrong that you could write volumes about just the one lie. Debunking the lie might take the, the entirety of your life, might take your whole working life to debunk that lie, and that'd be something that someone just throw out as if nothing. Lies are really, really dangerous because lies end up having families of their own, histories of their own. They mutate and become bigger lies. And it's like there's no one looking to try to penetrate the lies of the Muslim world. Nobody. So like, no, this is too complicated and asking questions about it gets you in a lot of trouble with some very, very angry people who've already made their minds up. They could immediately improve the quality of the people who are on the ground by sending veterans over there. Veteran journalists, not kids who we've not seen before, who are fools talking about rocket science, not knowing a damn thing, well, knowing less than I do, and I'm thousands of miles away. But have we got no veteran reporters? Older heads who've seen this before. Can we not send some of them? Don't they exist anymore? Or are they all ideologically captured too? I'd like to find out before one of these hoaxes ends up with the town of living on fire or something like that. Although it's unlikely you'll ever see that happen in Rochdale because why would Islamic extremists attack Rochdale? They already control it. It plays ball. So it's like there's no reason for it to go off here, but you know what I mean? There are some kids that think maybe there might be reasons to who aren't being properly served by the status quo of it, which is a thing. As to where new factions of youth... A new, a new faction of the coming together of all the fucking idiot kids under the banners of combined climate change BLM, LGBTQ plus and the Islamos. They're not properly served by the current status quo. And the current status quo will, will, will kill to keep its power. So it's like if they find themselves at odds... Even where I'm saying, well, Rochdale's pretty much an Islamic town. It's under control. There's no need to start any acts, acts or games here. It's like those of us who live here, those of us who studied this place, we understand that there are those who do whatever they want and are untouchable in this place. It's already set up. It's already done with. But there are those who may not understand that might just take the torch to the place anyway. And you might think, John, you, you're talking out your hat here, and it'd be, um, Town I live in's got a 50% population of Muslims. And you get to talking to them, and most of them believe in magic and make-believe when you touch them on them subjects. And they don't listen, and they can't be reasoned with. They are like Muslims are. Generally okay people, practical enough, but you get the thinking beyond what they're doing into the wider world. And suddenly it's like the gates of hell open and they start talking about signs. It was only a fortnight before, or a week before even, this kicked off. There were my father's neighbour, who's a nice fella, uh, a Pakistani guy who likes his motorbikes. Nice fella. But um, got touched upon his the old religious thing as to what I didn't reach for it, he did. And well, I know a thing or two about theology. 
and he was telling me it's all about the Antichrist coming back and Gog and Magog and he seemed fully aware that there was something big in the offing so where uh, Arabic into the Arabic internet well that side of it doesn't get so well covered or intercepted but <clears throat> any day of the year there any day of the year they're saying jihad tomorrow aren't they jihad tomorrow revolution tomorrow jihad tomorrow so on top of all that bullshit all that mysticism all that emotion all that fucking hatred you throw some new lies into the mix you give the world a new massacre and, and call it a massacre call it murder call it a a heinous war crime when it was actually a, a misadventure of war what happens when idiots are given weapons you know just what happens when it, it's not it's what i'm not like you can say there's no condoning and things like that is that you give idiots weapons idiot things happen you give people who haven't been properly trained as to just how dangerous this device might be if something was to go wrong and they've got it in the nature to be a bit half-arsed about it and then suddenly something half-arsed happens. I see that as evidence that the world is working as it's supposed to.